the quick and easy guide to CPO engineering careers. Following on from our guides on CPO deck and interior careers, it's time to get our technical hats on and lay out the career pathways for engineering, whether you're transitioning from another sector or gunning for a chief engineer role. As always, to keep us on track with the latest training requirements for Supiot engineers, we follow guidance from the experts at the Career Guidance Platform, Academy by Ephemeris. So, what does a Supiot engineer do? The role of a Supiot engineer varies depending on the size, type and usage of the yacht. And you might be working as a sole engineer or as part of a team of six or more. On smaller yachts, you will be responsible for the operation, maintenance and repair of all mechanical, electronic, electric, hydraulic, pneumatic systems, and in some instances, also the structural systems and appendages on board. Notably, on larger yachts, there is usually a separation of function between the engineer and the electrotechnical officer, ETO, who is responsible for the day-to-day -day maintenance and operation of all electronic, electrical, communications and audiovisual equipment. This could include radio, radar, telephones, satellite communications, including internet, navigation systems, email servers, TV, sound systems, and security equipment. We will cover how to get ahead on the Supio ETO careers pathway in our next article. So how do I become a Supio engineer? There are two common routes for becoming a Supio engineer. Firstly, you can enroll in the courses set out by the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency, MCA, and work your way through them from the bottom up. These include the Approved Engine Course, AEC, the Marine Engine Operator License, MEOL, and the Yacht 4, 3, 2, and 1 qualifications, with Yacht 4 being the lowest of four. Before taking on the Yacht 4 qualification, candidates must already have the MEOL and AEC certificate, or hold an eligible amount of previous experience in another sector first, after which you can progress through the other levels. This is the ideal route if you are totally new to the industry and don't yet have any practical experience. The second route to becoming a CPO engineer involves gaining a relevant qualification, such as a degree in maritime, aerospace or mechanical engineering, before embarking on your yachting career. The advantage of this option is that you will have a degree under your belt if you decide to change careers later in life. The disadvantage is that it takes longer and will not necessarily offer you any shortcuts in your training to becoming a CPO engineer. What if I already have the relevant experience? Well, if you already have a large amount of sea service bank, non-yachting certificates or other relevant employment experience, you can apply to the MCA for a letter of initial assessment. The MCA will then assess the level at which you can enter the yachting certification process so you can enrol for the relevant engineering courses, oral exams and ancillary courses to progress in your career. Which entry-level qualifications will I need? As for all crew working on board, to be a CPO engineer, you need to have completed your STCW basic safety training, which is a five-day course, and also have a valid ENG1 medical certificate. Assuming you follow the standard route into engineering, once you have both of these, you will need to complete the AEC1 and 2. AEC1 provides students with basic theoretical knowledge, as well as some practical hands-on experience of diesel engines and systems to enable you to meet the MCA's requirements. This covers the basic operations of engines and their support systems, as well as checks and fault finding. After this, you can then progress onto the AEC2 course which covers topics as diverse as refrigeration, legislation, books and records, maintenance systems and techniques, lifting and slinging, safe systems of work, electrical distribution, basic hydraulic systems, fresh water, sewage systems, and much more. So what are the different roles within the engineering pathway? Although this varies depending on the needs of each individual vessel, the engineering roles on board a CPO typically range from fourth engineer through third, second, first, and then chief engineer. The key difference between these positions is found in the level of leadership and management responsibility, which is attributed to each role. Fourth engineer. As the most junior engineering officer on board, the fourth engineer is still learning the ropes and you will therefore need to demonstrate a willingness to learn and get stuck in straight away in order to succeed. Chances are you'll be splitting your time between phases at sea and phases ashore to attend the courses necessary in order to progress in your career. For the third engineer, 
Your responsibilities will vary from yacht to yacht, but these are diverse duties which could include the maintenance of lifeboats, tenders, toys, jet skis and deck equipment, such as winches, davits and hatchways, as well as interior maintenance. As for the second engineer, you are typically the deputy to the chief engineer and have responsibility for the maintenance of the engine room, often taking on more challenging and repair and maintenance tasks, as well as supervising more junior crew members. For the first engineer, this is not necessarily present on all yachts. Some of the largest yachts have a first engineer who acts as an understudy to the chief engineer. The first engineer will take day-to-day -day command of the engineering team, including supervising engineering tasks and assigning work as needed. This enables the chief engineer to focus on the vast quantity of paperwork and business management associated with maintaining a large yacht. As for the chief engineer, which is often a the sole engineer on smaller yachts. They command all engineering operations on board and will act as the senior advisor to the captain on all issues relating to the condition and serviceability of the engines, propulsion, and ciliaries and interior systems. Working closely with the captain to always ensure onboard safety, chief engineers are also responsible for maintaining compliance of the yacht systems and equipment with relevant laws and regulations to ensure that the vessel passes flag state and other surveys and inspections. So how do you want to actually rise at the ranks? Progressing through the ranks requires you to apply for a Certificate of Competency, COC, for each stage. In order to qualify for the relevant Certificate of Competency, there are various requirements for each role. These include attaining a certain amount of seagoing experience, passing selected examinations, both oral and written, and holding the applicable ancillary and safety course certificates. To discover the level of experience and exact qualifications required for each certificate of competency, as well as other useful courses and qualifications to help you stand out from the crowd, you can visit the Academy by Ephemeris website and explore their engineering pathways. And its spokesperson from Academy by Ephemeris highlight, the yachting industry is always in need of fantastic tech-savvy engineers. It is a fulfilling, challenging and stimulating career, and we are delighted to have helped scores of enthusiastic candidates to achieve their career goals by following the guidance laid out on our platform. To find out more, visit the Academy by Ephemeris website, which can be reached on ephemeris.academy.